Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox, giving you the edge you need to get into the colleges of your dreams with your host, Steve Schwartz. That's me. Today, we're talking with Monica Matthews. So let's get started. Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox, Monica. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Steve? Wonderful. Thanks so much for being on the show. Now, Monica, you got an incredible story. You actually helped your son win over $100,000 in college scholarships. That's incredible. Could you tell us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, I'm a mom of three. I've been married for close to 25 years. And when my oldest son started getting close to uh, senior year, started looking in colleges, um, his first choice was MIT. And we looked at the amount that we were going to have to pay or, you know, what we thought we would have to pay to send him there. And, and my husband and I were like, oh, no, how are we going to pay this? It kind of snuck up on us. All of a sudden, he was a senior and looking at colleges and we had not saved any money for his college education. So um, oh, wow. that's kind of where we started <laughs> with this whole thing. Wow, that is really something else. So tell us a little bit about, you know, how you ended up. What was the process like that you went about in terms of getting these scholarships? Well, what happened was when my son, he started applying for scholarships on his own uh, early deadline scholarships because we found out pretty quickly that he didn't win. So there must have been a few scholarships. I know there were two that he applied for. It must have been later in the summer before he started his senior year. And I was so sure that he would win them because he had a nice ACT score. He was a straight A student. He was a, an athlete. Uh, why wouldn't he win these scholarships? So what happened was we got the rejects or the letter saying he didn't win. And I thought, wait a minute, there's something going on here. This is the kind of student that does win scholarships. There must be something I can do to help him. So that's kind of like how we got started. Take, take us through the steps that, you know, we get from zero in scholarships to 100,000 in scholarships. You know, to what extent, you know, is it need-based versus merit-based, you know, to what extent is it, you know, it's not from the school? What are these external sources? What's the composition of that 100,000 look like? I think it was like 17 different scholarships that he won. Some were from the school. Mostly were outside scholarships. Mostly were outside private scholarships that we just found and he applied for. And he won. And let's take a step back, though, because when he was not started off not winning the scholarships, I thought to myself, there has to be a better way. He is the kind of student that I know people pick to win scholarships. So what I started doing and how I really got involved is I started doing research about how can I help him? Uh, what do scholarship judges look for? How do I apply for a scholarship? What's the best way? What are the best tips? What can we do to make, to make his application stand out? So I started doing all this research. And then we started working together. And right away, I thought, aha. He does better with me and will apply for more scholarships when him and I are working together. When I would say, hey, son, you need to write this essay. Here's the topic. I'll fill out the application. Or I found this scholarship for you. This is the deadline. This is what you need to do. One, two, and three. So it's this whole teamwork approach that I am really big on. And I've helped so many parents help their own students because students aren't just, I mean, we see it on Twitter all the time. All my mom wants me to do is apply for scholarships. Oh, my gosh. I have no time for this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, my dad keeps bugging me. So, but I was working with my student. So that was a huge moment for us. And so because we were working together, he applied for several or lots and lots more, many more scholarships that he would have applied, than he would have applied for on his own. No, sure. I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, when you're in high school, you've got a ton going on. You've got your classwork, you've got, you know, extracurriculars, you've got your standardized tests. And then you've also got to go beyond that and, you know, research all these scholarships. And, you know, these scholarships all have different applications and essays and things like that. So you got to find the scholarships. Then you got to do all the work associated with applying. And, you know, it's a crapshoot where they're like, you know, there's thousands of other people applying for these same scholarships, right? So definitely right. Having, having someone else helping you out a little bit can make the process a lot easier. What were some, right. of, what were some of the the tips that you found, you know, in your own research to be most effective, you know, what did you, what did you guys do differently? Because, you know, I remember I applied for scholarships when I was, you know, I was going to college and yeah, I won some, didn't win others, but what did you find to be the most effective tools or techniques in your, in your son's process? Right. Well, I learned that there are several ways to write a scholarship essay, a, you know, a good way and a bad way. And the good one of the good ways is you get the judge's attention right from the beginning. You don't start the scholarship with, oh, I need this scholarship money because because that's what everybody does. You started out different. 
you do almost like a shocking statement to where, you know, I never sleep in on Saturday mornings. This is totally off the top of my head here. Um, instead, I get up early every Saturday to go down to the children's hospital to volunteer because I want to become a pediatrician and this is what I need to do. That's the kind of thing you'd start off an essay with instead of, I need this scholarship money because my parents are broke, we have no money, yada, yada, yada. So I learned the importance of a scholarship essay because that is huge. And then I learned little things like you never go over word count. If it's 500 words, you go right up to 500 as close as you can. You don't write 100 words when you can write 500 words because the essay is the way for the judge to get into your head, to understand you in a better way. So use that time. Use it efficiently and use as much as you can to help help the scholarship does scholarship judge really get to know you and want to pick you as a scholarship winner. There's other little things like, you know, the weight of the paper for scholarships that are printed out. <laughs> you print out a nice heavy paper. It even feels different. I do local talks here and I like to hand out my agenda on heavy paper. And the first thing I say to all the parents and the students are is feel the paper that I just gave you. Does it feel different? And they're like, yeah, it's like this really nice heavy paper. Well, that's one super easy thing that you can do. And as a mom or dad, go buy a pack of heavy paper and print out all the applications on that nice heavy paper. Those are some of the little things that we did um, in the scholarship process. There's yeah. lots more, but those yeah. are a few of them. That totally makes sense. I mean, like the first thing you said, that essay, you know, making it personal, not just begging them like, please, I need money, so give me money. But, you know, right. tell them a little bit about yourself. Make them like you. That's, you know, some of the things that, you know, work up you know, really well for you know the college essay too. It's a lot of the same stuff applies, I think. And then that paper thing, you know, making that making that impression, you know, it's a little bit of an investment to get the nicer paper, but you know, it shows that you're putting in the effort and it shows that you're serious about this. So right. And you know definitely some valuable that, insights. Right. About the investment, you know, you can tell your kids you spent three hours on this scholarship and maybe it's a say $600 scholarship. Well, you know what you might, that's like making $200 an hour if you went. So as far as talking to teenagers, you need to talk to, to them where they're going to listen and money talks to teenagers. So I would say that to my son a lot. Hey, you know what? You can be making 200 bucks an hour right now. So spend 15 minutes on this. And you know, the, the other thing too is 15 minutes. You can say 15 minutes a day. After a few minutes, they're going to get into it, and they might spend an hour instead of 15 minutes. But if you only ask them for 15 minutes, they're way more apt to say, okay, I can do this because I can spend 15 minutes. So it's just kind of all about uh, working with teenagers, kind of listening to what they need, giving them what they need. I'm a former teacher, so I kind of have that background on working with students. Um, but really, it's just working with your kids uh, to, to help them identify what they need from you and what you need from them in the process. No, definitely. I mean, making it more manageable, breaking it down is so, so key. You know, one thing I'm really interested in, Monica, is, you know, the idea of, you know, like which scholarships are best to apply for. I mean, like, you know, in that, you know, in the scholarship money that you've won, are there certain types of scholarships that you found to be easier to apply for? I mean, there are some that I think are going to get, you know, I look at the way it's advertised and I look at the organization offering the scholarship. And I think to myself, wow, like, do I even want to bother applying for this one? Given that it's going to be, you know, I'm going to be competing with a million other people. Like it's kind of like, you know, trying to win the lottery. Are there other scholarships where maybe applicants have a higher likelihood of winning? Do you think? Yes, ab absolutely. You want to apply for local scholarships first. And local is anything that your college or your high school counselor tells you about. Anything local, like from your credit union, your church, your bank, businesses that are local to your area, those are the scholarships that are going to have less competition. The same thing as scholarships that are, say, just for students going into certain areas, because it's already narrowed down for you. But local scholarships are definitely the first avenue for anybody looking for scholarships. Which makes perfect sense. Smaller applicant pool, a lot of people might not even know about those scholarships. So definitely the ones that don't get advertised that much and the ones that you know, people aren't necessarily going to find online even, maybe those are ones that applicants have a better shot at. How can, right. how can, what do you, what, where can the high school students learn about these sorts of local scholarships? Well, a really good tip um, that I like to do and um, really helps a lot of people is not only go to your high school website because high school websites, are, they're so great now. There should be a counseling section, click on it, and there should be a section just for college or just for college scholarships. So, but don't only just go to the one of your high school, go to all the high schools in the area. Like where I live, I live in a different county than my son, my kids attend, 
school. So there might be scholarships for one county that he could apply for, whereas another county he couldn't. But it kind of opened up the pool for us. And we found scholarships that we might not have known about if we had just stuck to his own high school website. So check other area websites and also college websites in your area. Um, there might be some colleges close to you and they have scholarships that are not just for their students, but for any student in the area. Oh, wow. That totally makes sense. I mean, you guys definitely got lucky with the two county thing. But even aside from that, if you're in one town, you, know, you go to your own high school's website and, you know, the scholarships listed there are just kind of going to be whatever that school's guidance counselor, whoever's responsible for that, whatever they found and whatever they decided to list. But if you go to the next town over, go to look at, look at their website because obviously they're trying to help their students, but there's no reason that you can't benefit from what they listed there too. I mean, if I were, no, I was applying to college, you know, before the, before there were, you know, serious high school websites, but these days, you know, applicants are lucky, you know, like you go, I would go to every high school in the county. I go to all their websites. Right, right. I look over to the you never listed. Yeah, you never know what you're going to find. Another really good tip for finding local scholarships is to look. This is a great time of year to do it too. You look in your newspaper, your local newspaper, and a lot of businesses. You know, they use scholarships really as a form of advertising. I mean, sure, they'll give away five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, but what they really want are people going to their website, checking out what they have, being uh, proud of what they do. Like, oh, great! Wow, this company they gave money to students. That must be a really good company, right? So you go to look for it, like a names in the news section or some sort of announcement section in your local newspaper. And a lot of them you're going to find um, this company gave away this much money to this student who went to this high school. And you, you write, write it down. Now, this is really not for really the seniors this year because they're already announcing their winner. But for people with younger students, um, start making a list of, oh, cool, my student's going to apply for this scholarship next year because I know it's out there. It's local. They gave it away this year. Chances are they're going to give it away next year. That is such a good tip. Oh my God, I wish I had known about that when I was applying for scholarships. It's, it's brilliant, you know, like, because they're getting publicity for all these scholarships they've just given out now, but these are annual things. They're going to be running it again next year, most likely. Right, um, most likely. Every so often you'll run into one that they don't do it again, but that's just life. You know, you just look it up. They're not running it. Just check it off your list and go on to the next one. No, that's, okay. br that's brilliant. That's such a good tip. Wow. I love it. That's, that's, that's really, that's really a great one. Yeah. Start looking now, make that list. Look, you know, next year you could be in that pool. Now, one thing I'm really curious about, you know, I think about, you know, the number of scholarships that I would have to probably apply for to, to get a hundred thousand dollars, right? Or even, even a tenth of that or, you know, a twentieth of that, five percent of that. So what are some tips you have for doing this efficiently? I mean, like, it can't be easy to write, you know, you're not, you don't want to have to write 300 or 400 different essays for those different applications, given that your percentage odds for each individual one aren't that high, right? Right. But you can reuse scholarship essays. That's another tip. A lot Absolutely. of them ask for the same sort of information. Why, do you, why should we give this money to you? Why do you deserve it? What are your career plans? So you can use the same essay and just kind of tailor it. Make sure the word count matches. Make sure you put in the name of the right scholarship that you're applying for and use it for multiple essays. So that is a big, really a big tip for kids who just are not good writers. And it's just uh, very hard for them to write yet another scholarship essay. You can reuse the essays. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was my thought, the idea that you reuse the essays. And that actually, again, is kind of parallel to something I noticed in college applications with, with their essays where like, you know, you have the common app 650 word essay, of course, but then you have a lot of schools with supplemental essays, but you can reuse a lot of those supplemental essays too. So that's definitely a key concept that I think is, is pretty valuable for folks. Just reuse those scholarship essays. I mean, you know, why not? You can you know, benefit from it multiple times. That, that's really, that's really good. Good to know. Thanks so much, Monica. Now, one thing I'm interested in is really delving into, delving into your story with helping your son a little bit and what his experience was like. You know, he applies for all these scholarships and, you know, in that initial period, maybe he wasn't winning so many when he was applying on his own. And then with your help, he ended up kind of staying organized, staying on top of it, doing a lot better. But you kind of helped him through the process, I gathered. So what were what was like one of the worst moments that you had in that process as you applied for all these scholarships? Well, I do remember having to remind him a lot. And that's just, you know, the nature of the beast, a high school senior. Uh, you know, so I started like texting him. I would say like, 
you know, hey, son, school's out in 20 minutes, so make sure you stop by the counseling office to pick up that letter of recommendation that they told us they would write for you. Um, I would also change the deadline. Um, I would, if this scholarship is due, say, June 15th, I would tell them it's due on June 1st. <laughs> so we have everything ready by June 1st. And then for some reason, if um, we're waiting for something else that didn't quite come in or you needed an extra day or two to write that essay, we would have that cushion. But I always change the deadline for my son. He never really even knew because I would be the one to put it all together. I would be the one to mail it off. Now, you know, times have changed a little bit. and A lot of scholarships are now online. So there's lots of online tips that you could go th through, too, to make your online scholarship better. There's not as many mailed in now. Um, unfortunately, because I love the whole mailing in process, there's so many things you could do. Um, you could add to and make that application look better. But there are ways that parents can really help their kids in the process. You know, not only just the reminders, but being the one to read the essays, being the one to go through the application and make sure there's no missing boxes, that sort of thing. Sure, sure. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. You know, like definitely it's pretty sneaky to change the deadline on it, but, you know, definitely there's no harm in a plot in having everything ready early because you never know what will happen at the last minute. I mean, even if like their website is down or something due to the high volume of traffic they have and you got to know what their email address is depending on how they do it, if they have like, some sort of form. Um, that when you for the ones that are you know physical paper you know aside from the weight of the paper is there anything else unique about applying for one by mail or in paper old school form rather than digital anything folks can do to make that stand out a little bit I mean you don't want to like add perfume or add glitter right I've heard that annoys people. Well, there are a ton of things that we did. And, you know, a lot of these are really detailed in my scholarship guide, How to Win College Scholarships. But I can tell you a couple more. You know, if it doesn't say you can't put anything else in there, we went ahead and added his scholarship resume in there. We made a nice copy of it. We put it in the folder. We added it to the paperwork. Uh, if he won an award from school that he was very proud of, we went and got a color copy. So it looked almost exactly like the original. And we would put that in there. You just have to be careful because scholarship guidelines are so picky sometimes. And the first thing they want to do when they get your application is to get rid of the ones that don't win. So if it says right on there, you know, only submit the essay, the application, and two letters of recommendation, don't send three letters of recommendation. Because even though you think, oh, but it'll make me sound so much better, to a scholarship judge, it says they don't follow directions. They're not a winner. So following directions is, is a really big one, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, again, reminding me of college application process, same thing, you know, follow the rules to the T. As long as you're within those boundaries, you know, they're not going to, you'll make it past that initial round and then you actually, they'll actually read your essay. But yeah, follow the rules to the T. But I like, I really like your tip about, you know, that scholarship resume, you know, just a resume a little bit more about you gives them a fuller picture. So if they're not saying no additional materials, yeah, don't go overboard. But maybe an extra page or two about something extra about yourself. Give them that fuller biographical picture. I think that's so important. So thanks for sharing that one, Monica. I'm really interested in, um, you know, back to your story, you know, any moments of inspiration or insight that you had along the way, along that journey you took with your son? Well, I did realize at one point that this wasn't going to be just for one year. I realized because a lot of his scholarships were not four-year renewable scholarships, they were just one-year only scholarships, that he would have to apply as he was in college. But it was great because once he got to know his professors and got deeper into his major, he was able to ask, and of course, I, you know, I told him, you keep asking, keep, keep looking. He was able to find scholarships that were for his specific major and would apply for them through the school, through his major, and was able to keep winning as he went through college. Oh wow! So it didn't even end when he got when he uh, you know got into college. He still was continuing to apply for more along the way. Right, right, and you know the, some of them became bigger. He won a seven thousand dollar Boeing scholarship his senior year, and he was so excited. I'll never forget. I was out on the cross country course with another kid, and I get this phone call, and he was so excited he won the scholarship. I didn't even know he had applied for it, but he saw the value of graduating debt free. And so he was excited about that. He would work in the summer, but then he wouldn't work all through the school year because he had enough money to have school paid for and to have his rent paid for. So once kids really see the value of graduating debt-free and they see their friends who have so much debt and older siblings and relatives, it really does make an impact on them. 
Sure, that's amazing. I mean, wow, congratulations on that on that huge Boeing scholarship. That's awesome. But yeah, also the, one of the benefits is right there is not having to work during the school year when you have all your college classes and also want to be having fun. Right. I'm not sure how much fun he had. He did have fun, but he was an aerospace engineering major and he did a lot of work. Well, that's, <laughs> sure that's, that's no joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tons of value in graduating debt-free, obviously. You don't want to have that hang over you afterwards. So definitely key to get that scholarship money and reduce your student debt, if not eliminate it or before it even happens. So that's, that's really amazing. Kudos to you on your success there. Thank you. I want to shift gears now and move into the lightning round where I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. You give me some rapid fire responses. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. What's your number one piece of advice for the college scholarship process? My number one piece of advice for that is to start right where you are. If Even if your student is a high school senior right now, they've already been accepted into college, and all of a sudden you have this big bill, start looking for scholarships right now. It's not too late to win money. You might not win enough for next year, the whole thing, but you can learn enough about the process, win a few, and then have your student apply the following year. So start where you are. Even if your son, your, our daughter is an eighth grader, start right now. Yeah, absolutely. Never starts to start the process early. You never, never hurts to start the process early and get that valuable information. Start, you know, doing what you can. Absolutely. Could you share with us one habit that you believe contributes to scholarship success? Keeping uh, writing samples of everything that students write that might be impressive or memories they might make because you can pull from the, these things when writing your essays. A lot of kids see the blank piece of paper and think, I have no idea what I'm going to write. But if you have some really brilliant writing samples that you've saved that they've written all through their school year, that will give them ideas and remind them of what a good writer they are. So that's just one habit that parents can help with um, that will contribute to their college scholarship success. That's great. What's one online college, college scholarship resource that you absolutely love? I love those big scholarship listing books. One of them is the Ultimate Scholarship Book 2015, next year will be 2016, by Jen and Kelly Tanab. They just come out with a great book every single year that's updated, and parents can take that book anywhere. And a lot of these are apps, too. You have smartphones now, so just take the app with you and look for scholarships wherever you are, waiting for your students from, say, soccer practice or waiting for the commercial to be over when you're watching TV. Constantly be looking for scholarships and use these resources. Absolutely. Those sound like great resources, and we'll link to that book in, in the show notes. So, yeah, you've been such a wonderful guest. Thanks so much for being on the show, Monica. Uh, what are you up to these days? Oh, I've been actually working on updating my scholarship guide. Uh, like I said, the scholarship process is changing. There's so many online scholarships now that there are a lot of tips that I need to share. And I, I do write lots of articles and they are shared. But I'm updating my scholarship guide right now on my website and on Amazon just to make sure that all the latest tips and helps are in, and help is in there for students and their parents. Absolutely. And it's never too early to start researching those scholarships. So definitely, we'll all, I encourage everyone listening out there, go to Monica's website, check out her book. We'll link to all of that in the show notes. Thanks so much for joining us again, Monica. Any final thoughts before you go? No, you're welcome. Just don't be afraid of scholarships. Don't be afraid to help your student. It's okay for mom to write down the, you know, the kid's first and last name in the application. That's not cheating. Uh, but don't do, the, don't do the SA forum and don't do the uh -huh. other forum. So you can do it. If sure. I can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. Such an inspirational story, Monica. Thank you again. Where can folks find you online? My website is how to, with number two, winscholarships.com. And you can also find my ebook, How to Win College Scholarships, on Amazon.com. Absolutely. I encourage everyone to check it out. Great resources. Thanks so much for joining us, Monica. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to College Admissions Toolbox. Head over to www.collegeadmissionstoolbox.com to get more free tools and resources that will help you get into the colleges of your dreams. When I first started working on my applications, I felt like I was competing with everyone at my school. There was this sense that top colleges would only take a few kids from each high school, and it made people afraid to help each other. So I went online and looked at message boards and forums to try and get help from others who were also going through the process. But I felt like a lot of them just had this kind of negative vibe. Everyone's accomplishments seemed more impressive than mine, and the people who posted were just kind of full of themselves. To be honest, it ended up making me feel bad about my chances, like I didn't have a shot at getting into my reach schools. So over the past few years, 
I've been working to try and change this. I've built an online forum where people actually help each other instead of putting each other down. And you can get advice from experts who've helped thousands of students get into top colleges. So check it out and feel free to post any questions you have at collegeadmissionstoolbox.com slash forum.